In today's video, I'm going to talk about the difference in reactivity between an alkene, benzene and phenyl. The main thing I'm going to talk about is reacting with bromine. Alkenes can do this, benzene cannot, and phenyls can. But why is this that these two can, but benzene can't? So, I'm going to start off with something we all know. Cyclohexene and bromine. The double bond breaks, the bromine molecules join, and you're left with 1,2-dibromocyclohexane. As you know, a double bond contains a sigma bond and a pi bond. I'm going to quickly refresh your memory about how a pi bond comes about. The electrons left in the 2p orbitals around the carbon atom sideways overlap to form a pi bond. The electrons in this pi bond are localised electrons. This produces a region of high electron density. So, when the bromine molecule comes about, the electrons in the pi bond repel the electrons in the Br to Br bond. What this does, this creates, this induces a dipole in the Br2 molecule. One end becomes slightly negative, the other becoming slightly positive. Now, the pi electrons from the double bond are attracted to the slightly positive bromine. This causes the carbon's carbon double bond to break. Heterolytic fission occurs in the bromine molecule. A bromide ion is left on its own and a new bond is formed between bromine and the carbocation. The bromide ion is attracted to the intermediate carbocation, forming the new covalent bond. The final product, 1,2-dibromocyclohexane, is formed. So, what about benzene? Why can't benzene do this? I'm going to draw a quick chart to show the differences between alkenes and benzene. Alkenes have localised pi electrons, whereas benzene has delocalised pi electrons. These electrons are spread over the whole ring in benzene. This gives benzene a lower charge density than alkenes. The whole stability and unreactivity of the benzene ring is caused by the delocalisation of these electrons. The halogen can't be polarised efficiently and a reaction doesn't occur. So essentially, there's not enough electron density in benzene to create a dipole in a polar molecule. So, we've established why bromine can react with alkenes, why it can't react with benzene, but what about phenol? Let's take a look. Phenols are a group of organic compounds with an OH hydroxy group attached directly to the benzene itself. Here we have phenol and 2-methylphenol. I'm now going to talk about the bromination of phenol and why this can happen. If you react phenol with bromine water, you're left with 2,4,6-tribromorophenol. Now this shows that phenol does react with bromine, but why is this? Here's phenol, add 3-Br2, this gives you 2,4,6-tribromorophenol. I'm now going to show you why phenol can do this and benzene can't. As you know, benzene has a pi system, a ring, a cloud of electron density above and below the plane of carbon atoms. So, here is phenol. The oxygen atom in the hydroxy part of the phenol has a lone pair of electrons. These are in 2p orbitals. And let's not forget, before benzene had its delocalised ring, around each carbon atom was another lone electron in a p orbital. So essentially, the lone pair of electrons with the oxygen atom are drawn into the benzene ring. This gives a higher electron density. So, this increased electron density can polarise bromine molecules. Not only this, but increases the reactivity to all electrophiles. So, I'm we'll quickly going to tell you about phenol, the simplest of the phenols. Phenol is solid at room temperature and pressure. Phenol is less soluble than alcohols. Remember, phenol is not an alcohol. When dissolved in water, phenol forms a weak acid solution by losing the H plus ion from the OH group. And now quickly talk about how phenol can form salts. So, you have phenol plus sodium hydroxide. This produces sodium phenoxide plus water. As you can see in the diagram currently being shown, it's a salt because the H plus is being replaced by the Na plus. It's okay to draw the O and the Na together like I have, but remember, never draw a bond, never draw a physical line between the sodium and the oxygen, because that would suggest that covalent bonding has occurred. But sodium phenoxide is an ionic salt because the H plus from the OH group has been replaced by a metal ion. You can either just draw the O and the Na together, or if you really want to, you can show it like this. Here is the reaction between phenol and just sodium. If you look back and remember some reactions that took place last year, you remember the hydrogen is often produced when a metal is reacted. Here is the diagram. Once again, the metal replaces the hydrogen, and hydrogen is produced. 